Hello and welcome to Signalbox Live. I'm Mike. I'm Montana. And today we're coming to you live from the Hornby Visitor Centre Open Weekend in partnership with the One to One Collection Museum. And there's a lot going on, isn't there? So much going on. And what we're happening this, this weekend, we've opened the doors to the Hornby Visitor Centre to allow the public to come in and we've also got the one-to-one -one collection. So locomotive storage has allowed public to come in and see the beautiful locomotives there. It's pretty special, isn't it? I know, tell me about it. What else have we got going on? We have got loads of exhibitors here. So we've got BRM magazine, we've got Hornby magazine, um, we've got Spa Valley, we've got the South East Railway Society, and of course we've got Hornby stand as well where we're displaying pre-production samples, uh -huh. latest arrivals, um, and we've got competition going on as well. Anything special at the Hornby stand that, that that you've got showing off at the event? Like, yeah, we, yeah, we've got something a little bit different actually. Okay. Um, so we, we've, we're we dry launching something called the Family Fun Project. Okay. So something that we'll probably discuss a little bit later on, um, mm. maybe in the next series. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. And we've also got local communities, right? Yes, yep. So we've got the British Transport Police here. So they're talking about railway safety. Mm -hmm. We've got the cadets um, and we've also got the scouts here. Yeah, I saw the cadets out with their band, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, luckily, we can't hear it on the uh, the sound. We've also, of course, got that first public look at the incredible one-to-one -one locomotive. So, big thank you to Locomotive Storage for allowing us to, to put on this event and for allowing the public to come in and see those locomotives. Now, this is the first live broadcast, so anything can happen, which is always fun, isn't it? No. Um, and it's the first for not only Signal Box, but for Hornby, um, never really done anything like this, especially from an event. No, I mean, Signal Box is, is going really well so far. I've seen lots of people today that have come over and said they're really pleased with it. Yeah. So, yeah, we're, we're more than happy to hear what your thoughts are on it. And, and hopefully today is a great success. We can do more live, yeah, live yeah. viewings. Well, that's down to the people at home, obviously. Yeah. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching each month. Um, we've got some special guests, haven't we, yes, today? Yes, we have. So later on, I will be speaking to CEO of Hornby Hobbies, Lyndon Davies. Simon Kylo will also be here. I'm sure everyone at home knows knows who Simon is. Yeah, and uh, we've got Adam in the bird's nest. If you've got any questions for Simon Kohler, get them coming in because we'll we'll try and feed them over to Simon when he's on the uh, chair. But do keep it clean and don't be mean. <laughs> <laughs> We've also got the Great Model Railway competition yes. that guys here. So um, the Great Model Railway Challenge, which was on TV last year, is coming to screens again this year. Mm -hmm. So 30th of August, make sure you're watching it. We've got um, Callum Wilcox here with his layout and also Laurie Calvert. So um, if any, any of you were watching that series last year, you'll be familiar with them. And uh, we're trying to get hold of Locomotive Storage's Frank Martin. Now, he is a busy man. So, and he's got a lot going on today, but hopefully we can try and get him on for a, for a quick chat on the sofa with you later, Montana. And yesterday I got a chance to, to, to meet Bob Fryers, who's giving the guided tours around the locomotive storage. And he gave me a very special tour just before anyone else came in. So, so exclusive. Jealous. Yeah, so, so you'll, you'll be seeing that later. Of course, thank you to all the crew that makes Signalbox happen, uh, and especially today, Signalbox Live, and to everyone who makes this event happen, because it takes a lot of work. Um, so, so, so well done. Thank you to them. First up, though, I got a chance to take a trip around our visitor centre with someone that you might know from the BBC4 documentary, Mr Peter Oliver. But don't worry, there will be a few less beeps in this one. I'm joined by star of BBC4 documentary, Mr <laughs> Peter Oliver. How, how are you doing? You all right? I'm very well. Thank you very for joining well. us. Thank Lovely. you for being here. Yeah, no, no. I'm normally here every day of the week. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so, yeah. Peter's going to be taking us around the Hornby Visitor Centre, giving us a little bit of a sneak mm -hmm. peek. Yeah. Uh, we're here in the cafe, as I said. Yeah. How long has the, 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 um, cafe the Visitor Centre been around? Eight to nine years, I think, now. Yeah. You know, the time goes so quick. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's unbelievable. So. And obviously this weekend is a very special oh, one yeah. because it's the Hornby Visitor Centre Open Weekend. Yeah, this, this is, is the day before great. at the moment. Yeah. You must the, be quite excited. Before the storm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It's going to be great, there. you know. Um, it's really marvellous, you know, everyone's looking forward to it, we're all geared up for it, everything's been going well, um, our health and safety man, he's been working like mad, <laughs> yeah, and, you know, getting everything done, in the, you know, to get car parking, and, oh yeah, it's going to be great, yeah, yeah. it's going to be a really good weekend for Hornby. So you're going to give us a sneak peek of the Hornby yes, Visitor Centre, so also, please yeah. do lead the way. Yeah, follow me. Pete, we're here at the entrance yeah. way here, and we've got this our main entrance. Lovely shop window, is it? Yeah, <coughs> yeah. The backdrop there with all the illustrations that was all hand painted by one of our members of the staff, Richard, who's still here. And then all down here, we've got obviously early scale electric boxes. Oh yeah, early um, 
a Rovex, oh, wow. and the one there with the, the black engine on, that was one of our first sets we done. And the, our first customers was Marks and Spencers. They oh, really? The, yeah, they took the set in. And then, of course, it all went up yeah. from there. A nice little old Airfix bus, which a gentleman's loaned us. <laughs> we get a lot of people coming in saying, you know, Granddad's passed away, blah, 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 would you like this? Which is nice. Which yeah, we yeah. say always, oh, thank you very much. And we give them a nice letter of thanks. And yeah, yeah. And then we got our steam rocket. Uh, which worked off a butane gas very impressive, uh, huh? with one coach. We only made one coach. Um, it's very nice, but it didn't last very long, unfortunately. Oh, okay. And over there we've got a, um, a triang tin plate. Puff, 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 puff. <laughs> um, and the, the big, big train. We made the big, big train. That's the blue one, okay. which run off batteries. Right. Oh. <coughs> and. Um, Clever Cook, which was a little microwave for children to play with. Which is obviously fitting for everything we do now. Well, that's it, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it is very nice, yeah. And then we got um, a Meccano um, windmill, which was loaned to us. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. there we go, you know, yeah, it's, just real, an, it's just a nice shop window for them to get them going. Yeah, a real piece of history. Yeah, it, it's history. Yeah. It's yeah. history. And there's Dirty Den from EastEnders, <laughs> um, with Frank Grant, who was our displays director. Right. Over there, the cricket team. We had a, we had quite a good little cricket team here. We was no we was no good, but we just enjoyed playing cricket. Yeah, uh, it was a night out. And over here, we've got Carl Muller, who was one of the MDs over the years. In the little cabinet here, we have the um, the actual silver cup with all the names on of Miss Rovex. And then a nice little pack of playing cards. Okay. And if people wrote in, say, could we donate um, a present? Or a prize for their charity, we used to send them a pack of playing cards. Okay. But now we give them a, a, either a scale electric set or a, a Hornby one, mm -hmm. and we give no end away. We must be one of the biggest charities here for giving presents away. Oh wow! Yeah, it's very good. That's really good. Yeah. yeah. And then um, we a magazine there called Happy News, which we published in the 70s and that, which was all about in-house people mm -hmm. you know getting married and divorced and yeah, yeah, what yeah. have you yeah and then over right. here we've got mr hendon who was the md when i started here mm -hmm. nice gentleman and that's the from Bewley gentleman all right and the girls so working there, there. Keith, wow. keith ness down there <laughs> who was an md here he started off as a, a rep right used to go around the shops on a push bike in them days <laughs> worked his way right up and finished up as the managing director here wow yeah, yeah so it's a real real it's a real little history, history, history room here yeah. for people and there's so many you know they come in and say oh yes i remember that i remember that oh, yeah right. which is really good it's really nice fantastic lovely Brilliant. well thanks for showing us around this room okay. okay as always lead the way lovely so this isn't obviously open just for this open oh no, no 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 this is open um all the year round oh except for Christmas Day. Obviously. Um, got so, that, so the staff can go and play with their trains. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's open, yeah, and it gets very busy, especially when the um, schools are on holiday. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they all come up here and they love it. But uh, we've got all our regulars that come in now too, you know, and um, a lot of um, small business people come here, you know, to have their meetings because mm. so, they're getting used to it. And we've got a good restaurant now and, you know, nice food and that. Yeah. And um, it's going very well. And you're all prepared for tomorrow? For oh, for yeah, we're all looking forward to the weekend. Yeah. Well, apparently it's going to be some weekend. Mm. It's, yeah, it is. It's good. Yeah. And of course, you know, we've now got a good um, MD here, mm -hmm. um, who's, I think, really turning the, the company around. You know, yeah. he, he's a gentleman and he, he knows the business. He's yeah. been in the business a long time. So um, hopefully... It's all going to go well yes. now. You know, it's upwards and forwards. Yeah. Now. Well, thank you so much okay. for taking us around. That's and, good. Uh, obviously, it is open throughout the year, the Hornby Visitor Centre, not just for this amazing weekend, seven days a week, 10 till yeah. 4 during the summer and 10 till 3, three yeah. in the winter. Yeah. Um, so come on down. It's in Margate. And hopefully you'll see Pete. Yeah. And uh, you might even okay. see me walking around. It is so. free parking. Oh. You don't have to pay to park. There you go, you heard it here first. Free That's parking. A bonus. Free parking. Yes, yeah, just there you free go. Parking. So over to you back in the studio. Yeah. Lovely. Welcome back to Signal Box Live. 
we hope you enjoyed that sneak peek of the visitor centre tour that Mike did earlier today. Um, the visitor centre is open all year round, so if you're in the area or you want to come and visit, make sure you um, check out our website for further details. So now I am joined here with CEO of Hornby Hobbies, Lyndon Davies. Good afternoon. How are you doing, Lyndon? It's great. It's fantastic to be here. Firstly, can I say it's it's it, we're in a studio here, an incredible studio that you yeah. built, and it's the first time I've seen it. So I'm wondering who's paid for it. Uh, but apparently, I am the warm-up act for Simon Cola, who is uh, coming on later. I think you, is you are. You he, are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. got a lot to stand up to, hasn't he? He has. Yeah. I want some particularly difficult questions sent in for Simon to answer. So please keep them streaming in. I, I know they are coming in at the moment, but do keep the difficult questions coming in please everyone you heard you heard what he said and <laughs> um, so are you enjoying the day so far it's brilliant absolutely yeah. fantastic day uh i mean i suppose the, the first thing is it, it there was no rain uh and we were a bit worried that you know yeah. we'd come here it'd be raining but you know the queues were there this morning as you saw yeah. people got in through the door um we were worried about health and safety and yeah. we had all these things, but it, it's just gone really, really well. Everything's gone to plan so far. Yeah, so yeah. Um, have you had a chance to go and see the exhibitors? Yeah, I've been around to see most of the exhibitors. Of course, I had a chance to go around yesterday, so I was very lucky. I saw a lot yeah. of the exhibitors as they were setting up yesterday. And actually, I think that's sometimes what people don't realise is mm. they turn up at these events, but some of these people have travelled for miles. Yeah. They've got here and they're spending hours then setting up these uh, layouts and there's some fantastic layouts out there there's yeah. one um it was i think it was on the uh, in the window of selfridges it's a it's a, a remake of it uh, but it's a, it goes around in loops i don't know have you seen yeah. that one out there i've seen i've seen so many yeah but i've probably seen that one <laughs> yeah so you now there's a lot of great layouts out there and um yeah, it's just worth it's yeah. great isn't it i mean i was speaking to brm magazine earlier they <laughs> traveled down yesterday it took them seven hours to wow. to travel down so yeah people have come far and yeah. you know it seems to be be worthwhile at the moment it's busy yeah, out there I, that's certainly everything i've seen i mean we're we're not halfway through yet we've still got another day yeah. to go so we don't know how it's going to go but and that's the other thing you're worried about is that people aren't going to turn up but they've kept streaming through the doors the day yeah. has gone on which has yeah. been great hasn't it that's it? been yeah. very good yeah and i mean in all seriousness this this is quite a special event for us isn't it you know only a few years ago we were sort of down the road in Sandwich in a completely yeah. different office. Yeah. We've relocated back to Margate and mm -hmm. you know not many months ago we, we'd only just moved in and now we're here we've got this huge event going on we've got visitors coming in mm. and they they want to see us they want mm. to see mm. locomotive storage mm. and the one-to-one -one collection it's, mm. it's special. Well, isn't it? You know we you're trying to run a business and we've been here now four or five months yeah. something like four or five months and prior to that we had all the all of the toy fairs and in our industry you know Toy fairs sort of start in November, December. Then the, the shows aren't on, but actually all the work and the effort going in to prepare for the shows that, as you know, starts taking place yeah. in November, December. And then the shows you have in January, we have the Hong Kong Toy Fairs, the Nuremberg Toy Fairs, the London Toy Fair, Gifts Fairs. And it's almost like it takes till March to recover mm -hmm. and then in March we, we, we moved to Margate and it's sort of great being back at this site because um, it you know th this was the factory that, that, that you know 20 years ago was making products for our company and th those sort of thoughts of what was happening here still linger you still feel it in the yeah. body of the building don't you I mean there's so many people I've spoken to today who have said you know, I was here 50 years ago and mm. production was mm. here and mm. it, I think it's quite special for visitors, not, not it, only us. Yeah, it is because, the, 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 you know, if you haven't been yet, you know, there's still time to come. But the exhibitors uh, are all out there in the old factory. So, um, you know, as you look above you, there's pipes, you know, there's a real industrial feel about it, um, which fits so well with the what the exhibitors have got got to show and of course you know we've wanted to open the doors as well and share with the local community what we're actually doing here because I get into taxis uh, quite often and uh, the taxi driver pick me up and he said what's actually happening there and you explain and of course some of them don't really understand the history of, of the company and what's no. happening um, and when you actually explain it to them and, and some of those people have come in today and they they suddenly get it because they're seeing all of the products all of the brands and of course you know above our door it says Hornby but people forget about Scale Electrics, yeah. Corgi, 
Airfix, all the international brands, Humbrol. You know, there's, a, there's so much that we do here, isn't yeah. there? I think it's nice that people can actually come and see everything. It, like you said, it's not just Hornby, it's, mm. and we've got various other brands. Mm. And also, as we mentioned, we've got the one-to-one -one collection, which yeah. is really special. Yeah. Um, how did that come about, and what kind of direction do you, do you see that going in? Um, well, you know, firstly, this site uh, is owned by Locomotive Storage. It was sold by the company some years ago. So thankfully, uh, we have a great relationship with uh, 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 Locomotive Storage, yes. and they've allowed us to come back. How they developed that collection, I don't know. Um, and I, I, you know, I, I know you may have got Frank on later, yeah. uh, and I'm sure he could give you perhaps a hint of what's to come. But it is truly exciting because as uh, you talk to the, the, the young children this morning, they're queuing up and you say, do you want to see the big train? Mm -hmm. And they say, what do you mean the big train? I mean, I mean the big train. Mm -hmm. And when they go in and you see their eyes and they see these real locomotives there, their little eyes glisten up and they're looking at it and going, wow, because they have, they, they, there's such a, a spirit to the, to the, to the warehouse. And, and these uh, locos are in there, are, are, are in such good nick. Yeah. I mean, I was, uh, I waited childishly the other night. Uh, the class 47 was coming in and I was told it was supposed to be two o'clock. I was looking out my window, three o'clock, four o'clock, five. People were going home and I thought, I cannot go home. And then the class 47 turned up outside at the traffic lights and you could see there was almost like car crashes going on. It's, an, ev it's an event in itself, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And then it was having to back down the road and the poor driver, as he's backing down the road, there's people there with cameras filming him. <laughs> you know, he must have had nerves of steel, I tell you. But that one to one collection is great and um, they've, they've just fitted those little uh, stairs there as well so yeah. um, up until last week you couldn't actually properly look into the cab uh, but now they've f fitted some stairs though so you can go up and you can also walk around uh, along the ramp and there's a first class carriage there which is what I would have travelled in in the past. Montana would have been in those old southern coaches wouldn't you or something like that. You, you, you it, nailed it. Nailed is it ahead. fourth class or something like that? You yeah, would have been. That's, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> and on the subject of the one-to-one -one collection, mm -hmm. obviously in the Hornby range, we've introduced the beautiful Bitten and yes. Black 5, which is based on yes. the two products or the two locomotives that we've yeah. got in storage. Yeah, they, so. they are. And uh, actually, it, it, when you look at the, the model and the real thing, it's quite interesting. But I, I, I don't, have they, I've heard that maybe they're sold out. I don't know. Are they? So the Bitten has yeah. sold out. Bitten sold out, right. Black 5, we've still got some left. Well, that's so, a sales strap line yeah. there. Yeah. So if you haven't ordered yours yet, order <laughs> it now. It's going to be available in October. Yeah, and I think I think that's about the fact it is the model and the real thing. You know, yeah. when people get the chance to look at the real thing, and then they see there's a, you know there's a model, it yeah. sort of clicks. And uh, you know, I should know. Are they limited edition or not? They are limited, the limited yes. edition. So that's yeah. it. Yeah. When they're gone, they're gone. Then when they're gone, they're gone. Yeah. All right, they are. Right. They're gone. Then. <laughs> And of course, we're here today, Signalbox Live. Yes. Um, Signalbox has been going for the last few months now. Have you yep. been checking in and watching? I've been checking in, but been very disappointed to see how much of Simon Cole I've seen on it. And obviously, I wasn't invited. This is the first time I've starred on it or appeared on it. Um, so I think it would have been better if I'd been on it in some of the earlier editions. But I, I no, I mean, it's great. It's great because and I, I think that will really develop. I mean, we are we are worried we're going to lose you to mainstream TV as you get more confident in, in what you're doing and all Thank of that. You. And I did see you write, reading the book on Selena Scott and how she became famous. I, I tried to do it discreetly. <laughs> but no, I think it's great because I think, it, 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 you know, I, I'm not sure it will all develop. But I mm. think you have to just see. Um, and I think people enjoy seeing what's, what's happening in a company and what they're doing. I always explain it like this, you know, we could be a company that made steel washers and um, that's as good as it gets. You know, next year's could be a three mil washer, the year after a four mil, and they'd all be silver. You know, what we've got, what we're working on in the company here is on some of the brands what's going to happen in three to five years time you know mm. we're working on those products now and, and as you know in in uh, on the Hornby uh, railway area you know you're looking at products that are far advanced they're going to be a couple of years yeah. away yeah. and you're laying down the plans for the future and I think it's that, that little hint of what's to come and also showing people what 
what you're doing in terms of the development of the products that have already mm. been announced. I mean, as I was walking around now, I was talking to a little lad about a Harry Potter train set. Yeah. And I, you know, that when, when's that a launch? Yeah. A cu couple of weeks ago. So we launched at the beginning of the year. Yeah. We've got we've got stock in now. We've got more stock coming later in the year. And yeah. um, we've got all of the accessories coming later on as well. Yeah. So. so and just to see his face because you know there was a young person who he you know he doesn't r relate to GWR or Southern but he related to Harry yeah. Potter you know yeah. 10 years old that, that's, I guess it's the perfect age you know? same for Paddington Bear Paddington Bear as well yeah, yeah one of yeah. my favorites <laughs> <laughs> um, and so you're not here alone this weekend either you've got your daughter Eloise here who's on the Oxford Diecast got, stand yes uh, Eloise is my daughter and she runs Oxford Diecast and so yeah. she's out there uh, it's a long old drive down from Swansea yeah. um, and uh, even uh, Emir who came down who uh, runs the distribution it took him eight hours yesterday wow. to get down here uh, yeah. so it is a long old haul it's worth it though yeah absolutely worth yeah. it and worth every mile <laughs> so this is our, our first event. We've never done this before. Yeah. Do you see it going places in the future? We've had a lot I'm, of positive feedback. Yeah, I mean, you'd have to sort of, you'd have to, if you're a betting man on what we've seen so far, you'd say yes. But I mean, you know, we're only halfway through um, and we, ha we have to be really cautious. Um, you know, we're in a factory, we have to worry about health and safety and everything mm -hmm. that we do and fire escapes and all those sorts of things. I think we just have to review it and, and see, see it how people have seen it it's not how we see it it's how the visitors have seen it and I, I'd agree with you you know what we've we know as we've talked to people as they've left that they've had a great day um I was a bit worried they'd come in spend half an hour but there's such a lot to see so yeah, uh, yeah. so you know if I was a betting man I'd, I'd say it was it would happen will you have joined the B by then I don't know I don't, oh, who, who knows <laughs> only time can tell well we know you're a very busy man yes, Lyndon so lovely. thank right. you very much for your time okay um, everyone at home yeah. Lyndon Davies thank you very much um, we have now got a special um, next section where Mike went and spoke to two exhibitors so take it away I'm joined by Bob, Bob and Nigel, Model World. Bob, thanks for being here on Signalbox. Yeah, no problem at all. So obviously the event's begun now, we've got people coming through and we've got these beautiful locomotives in front of us, but there's something a little bit different about them, right? Yes, you could say that. <laughs> they are all made from paper. Which, which is impressive and probably on camera even more impressive because they, they really don't look like they're made from paper at all. At the end of the day, all you see is a paint job. Yeah. Uh, it's a Victorian hobby. They right. were they could make some wonderful creations out of paper. Yeah. They knew how to cut the paper, how to treat it. If paper is treated correctly, you can carve it like wood. Oh wow! So these, after the initial stage of building out of paper, uh, they are all coated in shellac, right. uh, furniture polish, basically. Oh. <laughs> What we, what we happily call gunge. <laughs> they're, they're coated in that, and then once you've done that, you can then treat it as you would do with wood. Yeah. Um, this is my, my boy, Nigel. He's a co-builder. And uh, that's his latest creation. That's wow. the uh, Duchess Coronation, City of London. So how long would something like that take? You took, what, three, three months? Slightly more. Three to four months, yeah. Um, each one we build, obviously, they improve mm, yeah, yeah. as you build them. And um, we've been building them now for quite a number of years. Yeah. I'm an ex-mainline driver, oh, right. PR driver. Oh, wow. And it started off, I used to, because a lot of the guys I worked with were uh, steam men, mm -hmm. ex-steam drivers, they all had a favourite engine. <laughs> so I used to build them an engine. <laughs> <laughs> build them a model of the loco they used to drive you wow. know and uh, at the end of the day if you want a, a model that sits on on a shelf why pay thousands of pounds for a working model that you're never going to use mm. and uh, yeah and not only that they don't weigh the back of the car down so much <laughs> yeah yeah they're not, not too hefty so you're local which is amazing so it must be quite fun to be here today and see this event it's been a lot of years since I've been in, in this factory. Right. A um, couple of open days years ago. Yeah. Um, Mum worked here, wife worked here. Oh, wow. The boy worked here. Wow. He put a fact he got told off for spending more money in the shop than <laughs> the staff shop than he did <laughs> taking home. <laughs> so, but 
Yeah, it has altered a bit, but it's lovely to see it back at Margate. And you're going to get a chance to pop over and see the locos for the one-to-one -one collection? He's been in there, um, taking hundreds of detailed <laughs> photographs for this purpose. Ah, right. Uh, they've got bitten in there, the A4. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, we've got an A4 half-built. Oh, wow. That's so the info is going to be very useful. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's all good stuff. And it, yeah. um, it keeps us out of mischief. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for showing me around and, and thanks for joining us today. Yeah, well, thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Nice to see you. There you go. We're here at the Hornby Magazine stand and I'm joined by Mike, another fellow Mike. Yeah, another Mike. <laughs> thanks for being here on Signalbox. No problem at all. Thank and you. And you've brought this very long and large layout, so could you tell us a little bit more about it? Yeah, sure. This is uh, our West Coast mainline layout. Right. Uh, it's based in the period 1995 to 2005. Okay. Um, and it's, it, it models the northern section of the West Coast line, mainline, uh, somewhere north of Crewe. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, 19 foot long and it's 10 foot wide. Uh, we've got a, a double track main line across the front, uh, which we've got running here. And then at the back, behind the main line, we've got cement works as well. Right. Uh, the main line is there. They've got a big storage yard at the back, so we've got about 20 trains behind the scenes, <laughs> all ready to go. Uh, there's loads of trains with sounds. Everything's got lights on it. We've made it all set up for, for the show. So. Wow, so it must have taken quite a while to set up in the last couple of days. Yeah, we spent well, it was about six hours setting up yesterday. Right. Wow. So, yeah. And uh, obviously the, the, the day's just started, but I'm sure we'll have many more people running through. How does it feel to be here at, uh, at this event? Uh, this is brilliant. I mean, to actually be running our Hornby models inside Hornby's former factory is, is, is one of the reasons we wanted to be here. Yeah. yeah it's, it's a great opportunity, so. And have you had a chance to go through and see the, the locomotives? Absolutely, yeah. We were straight in there yesterday, yeah. then had a quick nose round, see what was new. <laughs> well, um, thank you so much for, for giving us a quick chat about, about this layout. It is very impressive and it's... it's thank you. It's great to, to, to meet you and to, to show off your layout. So Good. thanks so much thanks for being here. Cheers, thank you. So I'm here with Phil from BRM. Thanks for joining us on Signal Box. Right. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, it's, yeah. Nice it's to a meet fantastic. You. It's a fantastic show, isn't it? I've yeah. already had a lot of good chat, and we're still fairly early on Saturday morning, which is great. And uh, today you're going to be showing us around your cake box challenge. Is that right? right? Well, yes. Uh, what I've done is I've brought a load of models that we've built in the magazine. So let's start off with the cake box challenge. The idea with this was that we thought it'd be great to do a competition to get people modelling because ultimately we all want to get people doing more yeah. modelling and uh, enjoying the play, enjoying things. But people look at it and go, well, it's oh, it's, there's so much time or so much money, I haven't got the space to do that sort of thing. Well, what we thought was, what can we do that's small? <laughs> and, uh, and you might have noticed, I like cakes. So uh, <laughs> we came, came up with this idea. The competition is really, really simple. We ran it last year, and the competition is simple enough that rules are, it's got to fit in a cake box, a standard, a standard 18-inch square cardboard cake box, yep. um, available from any shop. <laughs> and uh, the model then has got to have two railway items on it. So this is the first one I built, which is the, uh, the, the famous scene from the Tipfield Thunderbolt, where Sid James takes on the, uh, takes, takes on the train. Oh, and yeah. It, as you can see, two railway items, more than two railway items. We've got a train, we've got track, we've got, and, and, it, and it will fit in this cut-down cake box, which is uh, handy for storage. But everything on here is the same sort of techniques that you've used doing any other model. So I've got a bit of track on here, yeah. I've weathered it, I've built it up with um, cinders, because if you look in the film, you'll actually see they've had to build the track up with cinders, because otherwise road rollers fall down between the tracks, and so oh, right. had to do wow. that. So a little bit of research. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is an old Hornby uh, 14XX. It was broke, I bought it second hand. It was broken. The, the, it had been converted to EM gauge um, fairly badly, and um, basically lumped along. It, it ran as well as any horse I've ever backed in the Grand National. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it was it was terrible. But I rescued it. It's had the motor. I take the motor out, use something or something else. Rescued it, turned into this. Um, the traction engine is a plastic kit, and uh, Sid James is played by a member of the Airfix Africa Corps <laughs> because he has the right shirt on. You just can't tell he's got shorts on. And then all the figures are white metal ones. So. What we did was we, we started off, and the theory was that in the magazine I would do a few cake box projects yeah. and that would inspire the readers. And to be brutally honest, we thought maybe over a year we'd get 20 models built. Yeah, yeah. The electronic edition of BRM came out with the first cake box uh, thing, uh, thing in, and 
people started writing their projects up on RM Web, our forum, mm -hmm. and by the time the paper version came out, a week later, there were 20 people already building Cakebox projects. Really? By the end of the year, we, had, we reckon we had over 100 people had built Cakebox projects. Wow. That was, it was just breathtaking. Yeah, so yeah. people really, really got into this, yeah. the idea that you can build a little model in a very small space. Yeah. And the thing is that okay, all techniques are the same as you use on anything else. Anyway, so this year, again, thanks to Humbrol sponsorship, we're running it again, and this time we're breaking up into three month chunks. So everyone, same rules, got to fit in the cardboard cake box, got to have two railway items on, but everyone's got a theme now. So right. our, our current theme is holidays. <laughs> and I, I stood on Western Supermare Beach and did a little video saying theme, theme is holidays, and people are now merrily building um, holiday-based um, holiday cake boxes. The latest one I've done, though, is because it's Hornby's 100th birthday uh, next year, yes, yeah. and because I knew we were coming along this weekend, I thought it would be a really nice idea to build a Hornby-themed um, cake box. Yeah. So what I've done is I've gone back to the very earliest days and built a tin plate model of a Hornby train set. This is actually a, it's an etched brass kit from Seven Models, which you, comes nice and flat and you fold the bits up and you glue them together. Yeah. The rest of the bits are from a Doll's House supplier, so it's all 124th scale, rather bigger than anything else we normally do <laughs> on this sort of thing. Um, and here we have the very traditional Hornby uh, train set box. Yeah. I had to do some research on the internet to find out exactly what colour it was. It's important to get the colours right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, it goes back to all our earliest days with train sets, so it's all laid on the carpet and you've used some books to uh, to make a tunnel because everybody loves a tunnel, yeah, don't yeah. they? Um, the rest, yeah, the rest of it is just sort of part of set up in sort of, I think it's granddad's study or something yeah, like yeah. that. It's really uh, impressive. It's caught a lot of people's eyes because yeah. they, they, what's interesting is that you get people who are non-railway enthusiasts, they, they actually relate to this stuff quite nicely because it's small, mm. but they relate to this because it's not hardcore railway. Yeah. Um, Ultimately, it's something for all the family. I know there's something Hornby's working on hard as well. It's yeah, to get yeah. everybody in the family in, involved. Yeah. It's not just something you hide away and do. Definitely, absolutely. Um, and that's, that's, that's very much what we do. It's very um, impressive. Thank I mean, they're, they're miniature, they're very tiny, and next door we've got some extremely large full-scale locals. Which, which, is, which is the great thing about this hobby, is you can be interested in absolutely everything. Yeah. I've, been, I've been through there, and uh, I definitely want to go back in there and have a look at that Wickham trolley. That's, yeah, uh, that's yeah. all interesting. Oh yeah, yeah, we got a chance to look at that yesterday. Oh, yeah, yes. And then, let's say, what we've done now is we've, we've moved around a little bit. We've, we've gone a little bit bigger because it's time to build a layer. This is um, what we're doing a call, call, series called the Billy Bookcase Layouts. Right. Famous IKEA bookcase that everybody seems to have one of. Um, this is a layout that will fit on a Billy Bookcase shelf. Right. Uh, it's a laser cut baseboard from a guy called Tim Horn who's who will do them as specials. It literally slots together. There's your baseboard done. It's um, Pico Track, uh, Hornby Point Motor using one of the um, above ground uh, bases there. Mm -hmm. And then I've, the buildings are a bit of a mishmash of ready to built buildings, Metcalf kit recovered, um, cheap property. There's a mix there, but what yeah. I want to do is make sure that the same. This is my next project. Finish this off, Phil, <laughs> is, is what I've been told by my editor. And so. Uh, that's a, that's that's my next project is to get is to get that finished. One of the things that you, is, I mean, I love model making, for, you know, full stop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let me let me loose around the Humbrol stand or the <laughs> Airfix stand. It's like oh, I want to build that. I want to build that as well. And I think that's the that's the enthusiasm that yeah. a lot of, that comes with a lot of this stuff is is just love making stuff and being creative. Well, thanks for taking us through your uh, your stand today. And where well, can they find out more information about anything? Um, yeah, all detail all details are on the uh, on the BRM website. Keep an eye keep an eye on the uh, on the worldofrailways.co.uk uh, website as well, where we're always updating stories. And if you want to have a chat about railways, rmweb.co.uk is where our forum is. Sure. Uh, we ha that's where the Billy Bookcase uh, competition is being run from, and we've got you, you'll be able to see loads more people. So not Billy Bookcase, the uh, the cake box competition yep. is being run from. You'll see lots of people building cake boxes on there and talking about cake boxes, talking about the modelling they're doing, yeah. um, and so it's and also you know. Or you can always get hold of me through the magazine and you can get hold of me through our web so uh, we're always doing our best to be approachable and uh, help people with their modeling well thank you for taking the time i really appreciate it okay um, so this looks uh, pretty impressive and quite intriguing uh i think we might let phil know that i've we'll just leave that actually 
So there we go. And don't forget, of course, to check out the Great Metal Railway Challenge, the new series coming out at the end of this month. Now, I'm joined by Marketing and Development Director and star of <laughs> James May's recent BBC4 documentary, Mr Hornby himself, Simon Kohler. Welcome. Oh, thank you. A nice introduction there. <laughs> yeah. uh, slightly OTT. Yeah, <laughs> lovely. So how are you finding the day so far? Oh, it's brilliant. Absolutely. It's beyond anything I actually expected. Yeah. Um, I don't think I've stopped talking since about 7.30, which probably not a surprise to too many people. But, I mean, it's, it's, it's terrific. Everybody's walking around with a great smile on their face. Yeah. Everybody just loves what they're seeing. I think it's different from... Apart from obviously having some really stunning full-size locos, but it, it's a different exhibition. It's not it's not like a, a Wally or yeah. or whatever. It, you know, it's it's a good mix, and there are people coming who aren't necessarily monorail enthusiasts. They're just interested in in what we have to show. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, I came out earlier and I couldn't get five minutes with you for, for people talking to you. So it's great. I love it. Absolutely, do love it. And it is quite exciting to see. I know you're saying it's not just enthusiasts, but seeing enthusiasts coming in and, and experiencing our work yeah. and also seeing the loco. Yeah, no, what I, what I find terrific, actually, is there's a lot of families. There's lots of little youngsters coming mm. in. You know, they're, they're, they're looking at scale electric. You know, they're fascinated. They have a right go with that. And then you've got the, the real youngsters. We've got a, um, a, a new... Um, small layout we're packed we're putting together um we've got these little ones who can only just see above the table top so their nose is right against the loco and and they're loving the, the excitement the brightness in their eyes is absolutely fantastic to see yeah i saw a, yeah. a, a little boy walking into the, the locomotive storage earlier and his mouth was wide open looking at these these huge locos yeah i mean what we've all got to realize is that yeah to us they're big but for somebody who's, you know, just two or three feet high, they're massive. Mm. You know, they're huge monsters. Fantastic. And it's in partnership with the One to One Collection. Yeah. Uh, and so that's a <clears throat> partnership between Hornby and One One to One Collection. Do you think it's one of our best partnerships? I would say it's probably our number one partnership at the moment. <laughs> I think I think it all works. I mean, if if you look at the stand in front of the building as a whole to the right. You've got the Hornby mm -hmm. uh, Visitor Centre, and then you've got the offices where, you know, we, we not only do we do Hornby on the railway side, but Scale Electric, Airfix, uh, uh, Humbrol, and, and Corgi, of course. And then to the left, you've got the building where the, you know, the one-to-one -one locos and uh, coaches are. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just so compact. <laughs> and obviously there's those stunning models of those locomotives. Yeah, we, we've, um, we, we've produced models um, of the Bitten and of course uh, of, of the Black Five. Hmm. And um, yeah, the reception for those has been very, very good. And you've, you've been in this site before for, for quite a few years and part of <laughs> Hornby for a few years. Can you think of anything like this happening at Margate? Never. No, no, no this is totally, totally new. This is so excitingly refreshing um, it, it's, it's, it's marvellous. I mean, it, it, you know, I can't, you know, we've, we've, we've done an awful lot of exciting things in this building and created lots of innovative and, and product that, you know, people really do enjoy seeing, using, etc. But actually opening up the doors, which we've never done, and for people to come and not just see what we've got, but, you know, the, the model railway layouts here, we've got magazines here, so we've got the one-to-one the -one collection. Um, it, it, it's terrific. It, 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 it's, it's, it's a bit like, you know, Disney meets the National Railway Museum. It's, it's really good. <laughs> <laughs> and we're right up with the modern age with Signal Box Live today. And yeah. that is partly behind you, uh, because of you supporting that idea. Was there a particular reason for that? Uh, yeah, I think, I think this, um, this, this day and age, people, you know, they, they, they like things fairly instant. Um, they like to be informed. I mean, years ago, they had to wait for magazines and so on. You know, then we've had the internet, which speeds things up even, even more. But it's, we're living in a very visual uh, society now, and people want to see. That's why I was talking about the family um, layout um, pack we're putting together. And that, 
that will be supported not only with instructions, mm. and it's very simple instruction, but those instructions will be mainly pictorial. But we'll support that with a video as well, mm. so people can see it. Yeah. And it, it is the way people expect um, things like the, the family fun layout to, to be. Yeah. You know, they want to see it, not necessarily read it. It's, 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 as I say, it's, it's the world we live in. And that family fun project is, is, is the aim of that, just to get people into the family? Well, yeah, I mean, I was inspired by something I saw in a recent visit to the US. Um, but, you know, when we do, when we do shows, um, you know, at the Wally show or whatever, there are always people come up and say, yeah, I'd love to have a model around. The little lad would love to have a model around. We've got nowhere to put it. Well, what we've got there is something that will easily slip under a bed mm. uh, and it's something that can be put together not not just by the dad or, or the little lad but the sister the mum mm. you know there's something that they could all get involved with and it's not going to take months weeks yeah. it's something that can be done easily done over a weekend and the fun then is enjoying what they've created seeing the train go around and then say oh well we can add this or we can add another siding mm. so it doesn't stop there and that's the whole thing it's showing people that model railways and modeling railways or playing trains is fun mm. and it's creative um yeah that, that, that's what it's all about i just want people to enjoy it yeah really well we've got some questions that have come in uh while we've been live right. uh, so we're going to pass over a few of those to you we've got one from clive cobbold who asks could we bring back the class 81 electric loco and class 86 electric loco ac um good question the the there is already i believe an 81 out there 86 is the model we have is quite a few years old so if we were to bring an 86 back, we'd probably do it from a, a retooling mm. prospect, really. And, and, you know, like we have the 85, mm -hmm. uh, 87 rather, um, we'll have it um, basically all singing, all dancing, lots of detail. Yeah, oh, brilliant. And Sam's Trains asks, which old Triang slash Hornby models do you still have tools for? Um, basically, the old ones that are not in the range, I'm afraid, um, have been uh, destroyed. Mm -hmm. um, prior to me sort of leaving on my sabbatical and coming back, um, and the business with the factory or the offices moving, um, a lot of old tooling that wasn't in the forest was sadly binned. Yeah. So I'm afraid nothing, oh, including the APT, I'm afraid. Oh, that's a shame. Um, Starkiller 100 asked, do you plan on working with James May on any more behind the scenes of Hornby? Um, well, my, you know, I'm always open to <laughs> anything that James wants me to get involved in. You know, we, we've, as a, as a company and personally, I've worked with um, James May on several projects. Um, he's got, he's a great person. Uh, he, he, he loves, he loves really what we do. He loves yeah. the brands. Uh, and he's got a fantastic imagination. So, yeah, is <clears throat> yeah. Pick up the phone. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. You know, Monday. You know, I might get the call. And then I'm off. <laughs> um, so we're here to see, of course, those those beautiful one to one locomotives. Mm -hmm. um, have you spent much time over there? Um, uh, I, I, I <laughs> well, because we've had bitten there for for several months. So uh, I have obviously on occasions been over there. Mm. Um, the last few days, yes, I have been over there seeing how the, the whole area has sort of been cleaned up and uh, cordoned off and so on. Mm. Um, and of course, on Thursday, we had the, the 47 uh, arrive, yeah, yeah. Um, which, yeah, is, it, it, is terrific. You know, it, it really is great to, to have these, these locals here. Now, I know, I know when they arrive, they can cause a bit of frustration to drivers and all the rest yeah, of it. Yeah. But um, it's just fantastic that somebody, you know, has the, the, the wherewithal that these, these sort of icons of, of, the, of British rail industry mm. are somewhere safe where they can be kept for yeah. posterity and here, really. Yeah, Marvelous. I remember when uh, Bitten came in, I was mm. lucky enough to be there when they, they brought it in and I hadn't seen a steam locomotive 
up close since I think I was a kid in mm. uh, Paynton, I remember. I, I used to go down there with my grandparents. So it was really impressive to see one of these locos up close coming in. And yeah, that was a really good experience. Yeah, some, some years ago, I was very, very, as close as you can get to uh, Benton. I was close to, um, uh, what, what, what loco was it now? It was the Commonwealth of, was it Australia? The Dominion of Canada, and it was um, it was amazing in full steam as well. Oh, wow. It was just yeah, it was just so close. Just they 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 glide, you know. They just yeah. you know they they're almost living. Really. <laughs> and next year marks hundred years for Hornby, so it's a big anniversary. Are you excited? Uh, yeah, I'd like to point out that I wasn't there at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, now I, yeah, of course I'm excited. We've got lots of things going on. Montana uh, has uh, spent a lot of time putting bits and pieces together, and you know, formulating things. And yeah. we've, we've, I've been very lucky enough to work with her, so we can have something to to celebrate. You yeah. know, a uh, hundred years of all be trains. Yeah, it's quite special to yeah, be, it is. to be a part of that. You know. Yeah. Um, well, thank you so much for taking time to join us and answering a few Sorry. questions from home. Um, we've got a real treat for you now, as we've got some exclusive video for you. Take it away, Adam. We're here at home of Hornby in Margate. Behind me is the building that houses the Hornby workers and also the Hornby Visitor Centre, which welcomes thousands of tourists throughout the year. Next to this building is H1 and H2, owned by Locomotive Storage and the home to the new one-to-one -one collection. Cars pass by here every single day, and little do they know that inside this large warehouse stand some very special residents. But before this was the home of the one-to-one -one collection, this warehouse was a part of the Hornby site. And like every building, it has its very own unique, special story to tell. Like all great ventures, Hornby was born of an idea. When we first started, model railways were either expensive and out of reach to the average enthusiast, or too simple to give more than a passing satisfaction. The idea was to retain simplicity and use modern production techniques to bring a first-class model railway within the reach of the average person. In 1908, Frank Hornby created his Meccano brand for metal construction toys, sowing the seeds for the Hornby we know today. 1920, Hornby became the trading name for Meccano, and the first O-gauge clockwork train was launched. 1938 was the birth of Hornby 00, and along with that came the first 00-gauge models, the Gresley N2 and A4, Sir Nigel Gresley. The initial models were clockwork powered and used either die casting or tin plate. 1947 was the return of Hornby 00 to the shops following the end of the Second World War. Production continued in the Bins Road factory, and in 1948 the first post-war model was released, the Stanier Duchess, plus a set of Stanier carriages. Moving from the Bins Road factory Liverpool in 1954, this building became the hub for Hornby. Models would be made on the factory floor and shipped direct to customers across the world. 1959 marked the introduction of Hornby 00's two rail track system and a new super detailed series of models with plastic bodies. In 1964, Meccano was bought by Triang Rovex and Hornby 00 was merged to create Triang Hornby. In 1972, Triang Hornby was sold to Dunby Convex Mark and became Hornby Railways. Fast forward to the year 2000, Hornby sets modern production standards with the outstanding 00 gauge rebuilt Merchant Navy, a model that many consider a turning point in Hornby's model production. Almost 100 years on and that spirit of the early days still lives on in Hornby. Technology has certainly moved on from the days of trying, but the fundamentals of creating high quality products using the latest technology are still strong. Throughout the years, Hornby expanded, adding Scalextric, Airfix and Corgi to its lineup. The company has lived through the swinging 60s, free love, the millennium bug, the internet and several recessions until 2015 when a decision was made to relocate Hornby, leaving this site here in Margate to write a new chapter in the Hornby history. In 2015, Hornby moved its main offices to Sandwich and distribution to Hurston, Kent. Subsequently, the site was sold, leaving the Hornby Visitor Centre as the sole reminder of Hornby's 60-year presence. The site remained unused, vacant and gathering dust, a shadow of its former self. Until 2018, when work began on bringing life back into the site, with a new purpose to house locomotives, enabling the public to enjoy the wonders of railways up close. Locomotive Storage's one-to-one -one collection was born. 
In May 2018, the first locomotive Bitten made its way from Crewe to its new home in Margate, a huge event and the first step towards bringing Hart back to H1 and H2. This was followed closely by Black 5 and several passenger coaches. In March 2019, Hornby Hobbies moved their offices back to Margate to join the Hornby Visitor Centre and in turn breathe life back into the vacant site. Now in August 2019, these locomotives stand proudly next door to Hornby, representing not only the last 100 years, but the future of both model and full-scale railways. This weekend, ticket holders will get their first glimpse of these magnificent locomotives, something we know many enthusiasts have been looking forward to. The lucky attendees will make their way through the Hornby offices where they'll get a glimpse behind the scenes, and then they'll walk through these doors where they'll meet the new, but very familiar, residents of H1 and H2. And I, for one, can't wait. Class A4 locomotive 4464 Bitten was built in 1937 by LNER. Bitten spent most of its working life operating on the East Coast Main Line, hauling passenger trains from London to York, Newcastle and Edinburgh. In 2013, Bitten became, at the time, the fastest steam locomotive in preservation to reach 90 miles per hour on three historic runs. Bitten is now in a queue awaiting her second major overhaul in preservation and was transported by road from LNWR Heritage in Crewe to become the first locomotive housed at the One to One Collection Museum. This certified 1000 piece limited edition model is presented as Bitten can be seen at the museum without valances but fitted with the 90 mile per hour commemorative plate and paired with its water tender. A stunning model celebrating the birth of the One to One Collection. A history of H1, H2 and the Margate site there for you and also a nice up close look at Bitten, uh, the one-to-one -one collection that we have modelled for you. If you'd like to find out more about any of the history uh, of Hornby Hobbies you can of course get our bookzine on hornby.com which has got lots and lots in there all about different brands and the different eras and yeah so there's lots of information in there so get your hands on that hornby.com. Now a lot of people in the chat have been asking where you can get the Hornby mugs from. I've been told that Hornby Visitor Centre stopped them, so get yourself down to the Hornby Visitor Centre and you can grab yourself a, a, a nice mug. There's absolutely nothing in that. Um, so, next up, yesterday I got the chance to have a very special one-to-one -one with Bob Fryers, who gave me a look around the locomotive storage area and have a look at those magnificent locomotives. So, here we go. Bob, me, take it away. So here we are inside locomotive storage with uh, the one-to-one -one collection. Uh, the rain is absolutely pelting down outside and I'm joined by Bob Fryer. Bob, how are you doing? Thanks I'm fine, thank you very much. Thank you very much for inviting Tell me. Tell us a little bit about, about you. What you what well, you? Um, I'm an ex-train driver. I started in 1972 and had to retire in 1996, but uh, I've got an affinity with railways once you're in it you can never never ever leave the railways once you're in you're in <laughs> it's in your blood <laughs> <laughs> and today you're going to be taking us around some of the exhibits we've got here the locomotives mm -hmm. and you're just going to be telling us a little bit about what you know about them and we are stood by bitten yes what a beautiful piece of machinery right, isn't it pretty, pretty yeah. impressive she's very magnificent isn't she she really is i mean say so when you get up close you realize what a lovely work of art these things really are you yeah. know i mean say so the machinery and the engineering into it is really fantastic. It's, uh, and to be this close to it as well is fantastic, really. Yeah. Well, I, I'm, first thing I'm struck by, because I, I, I saw it when it came in, was the sheer size. Oh, yeah. You, this is the thing you've got to realise. You've got, you've got nearly, what, nearly 200 tonnes of whole train with loco and two tenders as well. Mm. It's a massive, massive piece of engineering. Yeah, I suppose most people, when they see them, they're on the platform as well, aren't yeah. they? So they're not seeing what's you know, below. You are getting the full height of what you are when you're at track level and just how massive. And the power that is there as well, you've got to think what is there in power and everything, yeah. you know. It's, uh, it's just awesome. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> so what, what do you know about Bitten? What, what well, I know uh, she's... Um, one of a fleet of 35 that was built by Sir Nigel Gresley in the early 30s and uh, they were built for the famous race to the north where they were trying to get as fast as they possibly could between London and Edinburgh and of course you had the London Northwestern region were doing London to Glasgow so they wanted to make a high speed non-stop service as best as possible and these things were brought out because they were so powerful, streamlined, makes the service faster it, it was realised with streamlining how much you could actually 
extra power you could get out of a steam engine and everything. And of course, with a double tender, it didn't have to stop anywhere because it didn't have to stop for water or anything. An extra 9,000 gallons of water at the back. Wow. You know, and of course, you've still got the troughs to fill the other one up as well. So yeah. they could go non stop London to Newcastle, no problems whatsoever. Yeah. You know, it was, uh, but the poor old fireman was shoveling coal like it was going out of business. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he got nine he's got nine tons of coal in there to shovel away. So, so uh, but the, the race to the north was it was before the war. They wanted to make rail travel as fast as possible, mm. and they wanted to make it as luxurious as possible. So they brought out these luxury trains. They had the Elizabethan that used to run on the eastern region, which was only eight coaches, but pulled with one of these, it used to fly. Oh, wow. You know, 100 miles an hour, no problem, sort of thing. Like. Did but, they manage it? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Very, very often, yes. Especially with the eastern region was straight and flat in a lot of places mm. so uh, there was a few banks because uh, Stoke Bank's the most famous one but uh, yeah they oh they managed it though they, they used to have some really really good fast trains over there yeah yeah and that's that's what is that that's the commemorative plaque on there is that yeah that's commemorate that oh yeah is it or is it well I I'm not too sure what the plaque is on the on the side because okay. but can we go down and have a look at it we would do, yeah yeah, we can yeah have we'll have a look at it but um of course, the most famous sister, the Mallard, oh, yeah. fastest steam engine in the world, 126 plus miles an hour. It's based at York in the National Railway Museum, but they were all the same. I mean, you say they were all powerful. It was just lucky it was Mallard was the one that was come out X Works and they decided to use her sort of yeah. thing. Like, but uh, no, these engines, 100 mile an hour run, running regular every day, every day. Yeah. Well, you think about it, we're. we're still doing that today yeah, really yeah. you know it's and what we're 80 years 80 years on mm. nearly 90 years on so it, it was a magnificent piece piece of equipment and a magnificent achievement and obviously as a former driver yourself i'm not saying you've driven these <laughs> steam locomotives of course no no what would the experience maybe be for for the driver in a well it it was a it was a mega job really i mean say the driver's got he's got to do all the oiling he's got to oil all this side rods he's got to do check make sure everything is right the sandbox is all right the fireman's on there checking make sure there's no coal overhanging on the thing the water levels are all there the, the amount of work there is to get these things ready to go that's why they used to have fire crews on sheds all they did was prepare engines that's all they did they prepared engines and then the crews that were taking them off used to just come on have a little final walk around sort of thing like and off they went but there was so much work to go into one of these things because mm. you know it's not like throwing a couple of fire lighters in and the things are ready to go in a couple, a couple of hours it takes 12 14 hours to get these things ready sort of thing so you know it's a it's a long long job and everything mm. you know because that fire in there it's not got to be a little you know it's got to be a big one and it's got to really be out and hope you know be good yeah yeah to get the damn thing steaming you know you don't want it to sort of go out of King's Cross and get as far as Finchby Park and run out of steam you know it's got <laughs> yeah, to be able to go yeah. sort of thing like, yeah, you know. yeah. but it was a mega amount of work in one of these things mega amount of work that's why the railways were one of the biggest employers in before the war sort of thing yeah, yeah. amount of staff it was a, obviously there's a lovely plaque here. yeah tell us a little bit more about that. well this is the number 81866 that's its build number right. for when it was uh, on the production line at, uh, and of course when it came out it was given its own number and, and everything numbers changed all the way through the through the, the system I mean, it had its own number then when it came under british railways it had you know when the railways were nationalized in 1948 mm. it had another number then and uh, it, it, so i tell you what it must have been a train spotter's nightmare <laughs> <laughs> but, but this is the original and everything like that and lovely lined out numbers and everything and it's you know, when you, oh when yeah, Gar like Garter this. Blue, yeah, it's Garter Blue and everything, and uh, it was, uh, it was a, it was classy. I mean, so when they were all shiny and bright and everything, and stuck onto a nice yeah. rake of really nice shiny coaches yeah. and everything, makes the day look a little bit, you know. But uh, then again, they used to employ cleaners. Yeah. Just doing the, the first, you know, the young firemen and everything, they started on the job as cleaners, and that's all they did was just clean engines. Right. Just polish them all up, and that was it. They were cleaners, cleaning engines, you know, to make them, they had a pride. Mm. You've got to think about them. These are like royalty. It's 
when it comes to steam engines. Yeah. These were the royal engines and everything. These were the top of the pop sort of thing, like on the railway. So these had to be absolutely immaculate. Yeah. So, you know, you're going to run Pullman trains and everything. You've got to have a train like this. It's got to be immaculate. I think uh, when, when public come in tomorrow, we'll probably be fending them off. <laughs> well, yeah. Get, get oh, yeah. I'll tell you one thing. Watch out for somebody with a rivet gun trying to cut that off. <laughs> uh, this is uh, the LMS answer to their workhorse. I mean, 800 and nearly 850 of them built. And a mixed traffic locomotive could be used on freight, parcels, passenger trains. And they were. They were really used. They were a real good workhorse and everything. Built, built and designed by Sir William A. Stanier. And um, fantastic locomotive for what it could do. I mean, say, it had a route availability of seven, so it could virtually go anywhere and do anything. It was um, really user friendly. And after the BR days, when it went into BR, it was virtually seen all over the country. It was everywhere. It wasn't just on the LMS, it was everywhere. It was all over the place. But it was such a good engine. It was a good firing engine. A lot of blokes used to love, the old steam blokes, they used to love working on it, you know. It was, it was just a really, really good workhorse. And the equivalent in today's day and age would have been the class 47 diesel sort of thing. So, yeah. you know, for what, what this thing could do. And uh, Stanier had a terrific reputation for building really good steaming engines and yeah. everything like that. And good, good, good engines to maintain and everything like that. But, yeah, another nice beast. Weighs about 100 and, what is it, 72 ton the engine and another 50 tons. So you've got, you've got 112, 100, no, 122 tons. But that's not very good. <laughs> so another big old piece of machinery and a lovely piece of engineering. And so many different varieties. And they did, they mucked about with boilers on them. They mucked about with the valve gears. There was, some had, oh, it, 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 it they used to play with them all the time, so for advancement, really, you know, to make yeah. them look, um, you know, trying to make modernise them and make yeah. them more efficient. Yeah. So the Black Five is the name for the collection of locos. It's a five MT. They call it a five MT, which is a mixed traffic locomotive and everything. And the Black Five name is because they were always black. They did bring out the odd one or two in colours and everything like yeah. that. But main majority of them were black, so yeah. they were called a black five. It's, yeah. And the name stuck. Yeah. You know, it's uh, you it's know, perfectly. it fits perfectly, as you say. Here now by class forty-seven, and this is very special because this came in just last night. So none of the public yet have got to see it. They don't think they really knew that it was even coming in it's mm. this late in the day. And also, Bob, you got to to drive this. I have actually driven this locomotive, yeah, unfortunately, but uh, <laughs> there we go. Um, they were a fantastic workhorse. I mean, built in from 1964 onwards to replace, uh, well, the Black Five that we looked at earlier and everything like that, and another mixed traffic locomotive. Yeah. I mean, passenger trains, freight trains, freight liner trains. I mean, say they used to pull massive great freight liner trains, coal trains, MGR trains. It, it was absolutely a real workhorse and that's why they built over 500 of them sort of thing like you know so um yeah lovely engine been um lovely brush soldier engine they started off at 2750 horsepower but then they reduced the horsepower to make the longevity of the engine to make it last longer and everything so well, it, but it could still do the job that was the thing you know and it's to prove it's still successful there's still 80 of them running so you know <laughs> They're over 50 years old and they're still running. It's fantastic. And what was it like driving one of these? Lovely, lovely and yeah. nice and comfortable. You, to, you used to get the 60 mile an hour bounce. Right. Uh, 60 mile, they used to bounce a little bit, but Being no. Ford K8. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I don't know. But no, they were, I used to find them really comfortable to drive and they're really easy to drive as well. And faults and failures on them and everything was reasonably easy and everything yeah. as well. So yeah, they were they were nice. They were really nice. Yeah, I enjoyed driving them. It's very impressive. I mean, obviously, it's been spruced up. Um, yeah. When well, you think you think about it, it's 115 tons, mm. and you think the Black Five was 122 tons, and that's two pieces. That's right. got an engine and a tender. So you've got to imagine how big that piece of machinery that's inside there that's generating all that electricity, because all it is is a mobile generator. Yeah. Diesel, electric motors. So it's, all it's doing is generating electricity to turn electric traction motors. And you assume looking at it, 
from here that it's quite spacious inside. Is that the case? Uh, I wouldn't want to walk uh, uh, um, a <laughs> bit rotund sort of thing. Like, and there's not a lot of room inside there, you know, but uh, there's... They're not too bad. They're better than some of the uh, really early ones where they were very tight. But uh, no, they were nice. They're lovely engine, and they were good. They were really good workhorses and everything. I don't think there was many people who didn't like working on them. Yeah, I enjoyed them. <laughs> <laughs> and how long would you have been sort of working on a on a shift? I suppose is that the best. Thing? Well. Hmm, God, sometimes it, it was a toss of a coin. You used to yeah. go and book on, you know. But they were normally eight eight hour eight hour shifts, yeah. possibly nine. But uh, sometimes if something went wrong, which was quite often, uh, <laughs> you ended up, you know, possibly 12 hours, but then you go. Any uh, uh, yeah. stories of, of, of those years? Oh, oh don't, <laughs> they could, uh, could get done for uh, <laughs> defamation of character, but no, I had some lovely times on yeah. them and everything. Yeah, lovely times so on them. So it would be quite nice to see public coming in. And yeah, it would be nice, it. yeah. It's a shame that one, this, one, this one they don't think will ever run again mm. because it's been stripped at first keeping the other ones running and everything but they I'd love to get up there and get it started and gas everybody all out in here but uh, <laughs> yeah because but no no unfortunately mother nature said no so there you go I can't do it anymore but uh, oh, lovely lovely engines really well, did enjoy yeah, thanks for telling us yeah. all right take a look at something else yes fine lovely okay so Bob where and what am I sat in here this is quite spacious uh, well yeah uh, it's, it's, this is a new one on me I mean so I've never been in one of these in my life but this is a Wickham's engineers trolley and okay. uh, the only one I've ever seen before as I said is uh, in the St Trinian's and the, the great train robbery and uh, that is the only time I ever saw one I mean I, n I never actually did see one uh, when I was on the railways so but they there was loads of them made, hmm. loads, I believe there was over 500 made, and they were all over the world, India, everywhere like that. Uh, wherever there was a railway, I believe there's one of these. <laughs> uh, but uh, fantastic little things. Yeah. I, I, would have, I would have loved having a crack at one yeah. of these. It would have been great fun. We'll get you in the front. Yeah. Yeah. We'll oh, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Stand back. Yeah. So this weekend is a very special one yeah. for locomotive storage and presumably for yourself as well as someone who's worked on the rails how does it feel for you to be a part of this event well as a, after meeting frank and he was telling me about this and when i said i was an ex-train driver and we just sort of clicked and he said he invited me along to uh, you know say would you like to help and volunteer and everything like that and i said oh it's in the blood, you know, I, I said I can't stop myself and I have enjoyed every minute of it. When I do come out here, I have enjoyed every minute of it to see these things really up close. Mm. I mean, say it's, it's something else and mm. members of the public, when they do come to see this and everything, you're not going to get much closer than this. Shame they're not in steam, but then again, well, but you're not going to get much better. Mm. It's, it's so, and you are so close to it. And it's... It's, it's like actually being in a loco shed. It really is yeah. like being in a shed. So it really is fantastic. And may it go on and may it prosper. Yeah. It really is really good. I love it. Well, thank you so much for, mm. for showing us around. This is obviously to give the people at home a chance who maybe aren't able to attend that chance and that glimpse to just see a little bit of what locomotive storage and the one-to-one -one collection is all about so mm. i really appreciate you taking yeah. the time to take me around it's been great from my point of view to to hear stories and, and hear a little bit more about the locos that i didn't know about so bob thank you yeah no thank problem. you for watching and uh hope you enjoyed that glimpse of the one-to-one -one collection go behind the scenes of the hornby development office with the engine shed Coming to you at least once a month, our regular blogs have all the latest information and samples that the team have been working on. From research to design, decoration to approval, the entire developmental cycle is covered in the engine shed and offers you a unique perspective on the model railway industry. Focusing on newly tooled models in the current range with some fan favourites and special projects thrown in, you can chart the progress of your model from its inception right through to when it hits the shelves and, more importantly, your layout. Through exclusive imagery and video, the engine shed showcases the hours and hours of skilled work each designer goes through to ensure each Hornby model is as good as it can possibly be. In 2019 so far, we've covered our unbelievably popular Terriers, which have since sold out. There's also been a full write-up on the Colette 57 bow-ended suburban coaches, new analog controller, and of course, the diminutive but much-loved Ruston & Hornsby 48DS. 
But that's not all. There's also been features on the large Prairie Mark 2F coaches, bullied 59 footers, and with many more new tooling projects to go, there's still so much more to cover. So make sure you read the engine shed each and every month, exclusive to the Hornby website. We hope to see you soon. Here we are, the doors have just opened around about 10 minutes ago, so the early bird um, ticket attendees will be coming through the doors, and I'm joined by a very special guest, Laurie Calver. Laurie, welcome Hello, to Signalbox. Hello nice to meet you. <laughs> and you are here today with your steampunk sci-fi layout. Exactly, this is Kato Pass, my underground rocket base. It's an underground world which is under attack on the surface, so I'm getting the rocket ready for liftoff. Oh, oh wow, in the back there, look. Yeah, it's actually a fly model rocket. Well, it was once, won't fly today because no. it does 400 miles an hour and 1,000 feet. So not yeah, today. They'd, they'd probably put a hole in the roof, I think, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so this is obviously a very elaborate layout that you've got here. Is there any elements that, that you're particularly fond of that you, that, that you can maybe tell us a little bit more about? I particularly like the locomotives that mm -hmm. I've converted. These are regular Hornby locomotives, such as a Smokey Joe. Oh, wow. And then after six hours work it becomes executor so one evening it's yeah. not too hard to do and you stick kit parts on it and yeah. paint it all up and it looks really cool six hours that's six that's hours far less than i thought that it would take well they can take longer if you want right. them to yeah. but that was the first thing i ever made really and everything else spawned from that oh wow yeah. um and so obviously you take this to various different events and do you get a good reaction from people when you take it around? Out of all the models I take around, this one is by far the most successful yeah. and it's done really well for me. Well, I think it really appeals to young families, mm. young children especially. They can relate to science fiction and now they are known steampunk as well. The mums love it and the dads. And I think if the, the grandmothers and fathers and dads and mums can do this sort of things with their sons and daughters, that'd be really good because this yeah. is imaginative modelling. Yeah. It's a different type of modelling yeah, to yeah. the realistic challenge. And I think it's worthy, therefore, in its own right. Yeah. So obviously it's still model railways, but it's a little bit different, isn't it? It is. It is different. And obviously I don't want to upset any of the traditionalists. This is still model railways. There's still high quality modelling in there. Yeah, yeah. Whereas their challenge is to make something based on realism. Mine is to come up with something from a blank sheet. So yeah. it's imaginative modelling. Yeah. What could you do? Yeah, yeah, oh, which, I, which I absolutely love. And you've got dinosaurs all on the top, which I'm a big fan of anyway, so you've sold me on that one. Of course, yeah, who doesn't love dinosaurs <laughs> and robots, rockets, submarines and spacecraft? And, and of course trains. And tea's a big thing as, as well in steampunk. And, and tea of course, yeah, they're racing around to deliver the tea as quickly as possible. Well, it, it looks fantastic. And you also tea. got a little display just over here from, for, with a few things here. Do you want to show us some of these? So, so this is a so this is a brief display of what we did on the Great Model Railway Challenge for Channel okay. 5. And this is one of the locomotives that was especially made for that show. Funnily enough, I'll let you into a little secret. It let us down. Really? It got stage fright. It didn't move. I'm filming. <laughs> oh. It just didn't move. It's digital and it didn't want to know. So I bet it did it every single time before that. It, it didn't and it? after. Oh, yeah, gosh. it just it got stage fright. So the, the other one, one, two, three, had to stand in and yeah. did the job. And it, everything worked fine after that. It was a really lovely show to do. Yeah. hope it inspires a lot of people into yeah. the hobby. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you so much for giving us a quick glimpse. We won't keep you too much longer because we know you're going to have adoring fans coming in soon. So I hope so. Thank you so much thank for being here. Thank you, Mark. It's been a really pleasure. It, yeah. yeah, thank you. Cheers. So, I'm now joined by Callum Wilcox, your YouTube channel, SDJR7F88. Yep. I had, to, I had to have a little prompt there. But, um, <laughs> there is a bit of a tongue twister. <laughs> How are you doing? You all right? Doing good, yeah. Thank you so much for being on Signal Box. We've yeah. got the doors open now, so people are going to be streaming in. Um, we stood by your very impressive layout. Yeah, this is Amiens 1918, my World War I trench railway. Uh, it depicts the uh, starting or opening phase of the Battle of Amiens, which right. um, happened on the 8th of August uh, 1918, and was basically the final offensive, which basically saw the end of the First World War. Wow, and it's, it's very detailed, like impressively detailed. 
I wanted to see what, how much I could get into a small space as I'm, I'm quite a fan of small layouts, ones that are easy to transport and take around. And um, being a narrow gauge scale, I meant I could get more in there, but at the same time I wanted to capture the sort of the feel and the vibe of this, you know, a very poignant subject. It's, you know, quite hard to model military railways yeah. in the sense that, you know, this is obviously a real um, thing that happened and it's obviously uh, a, a sad point in history and I wanted to try and capture that and sort of capture the memory of the, the, the men involved. Um, so we got the artillery battery which is the centre of the layout there and you can see yeah. the crew loading that ready for the uh, start of the offensive um, probably within a couple of sort of um, hours time. Uh, then of course we've got the troop train which is just coming into shot now and you can see these um, poor souls are obviously on their way off to the front but quite a lot of them are in um, high spirits. You can see in the back um, front wagon there, sorry, the, there's a couple of um, troops telling each other a couple of jokes. They're passing around cigarettes and um, flasks. Oh, wow. And then of course we got like uh, the tanks, which are of course iconic mm. with the First World War. And many of these um, kits are actually um, a number of different things. So I wanted to incorporate my interesting um, kit building. So obviously Airfix kits were a natural uh, source for this. So we've got an Airfix Mark yeah, I yeah, tank there. Amazing. It's been modified to look like a Mark IV. We also have a Corgi bus, so that's also on there. And then, of course, we've got some of the Airfix resin buildings on there as well. So it's a real mixture of all my hobbies put into one. Yeah, and how long did the layout take you all told? This one took nine months to build in total. Wow. Uh, it's a mixture of also recycled parts. So I like to do make, do and mend. So the trench walls are also made from coffee stirrers and other bits and pieces. <laughs> and uh, my daytime job currently is as bar staff. Right. So things like the spent artillery shells by the artillery gun are actually uh, drinking straws. Really? <laughs> yeah, drinking straws. Oh, see, that's, that's what I find so amazing about it, is that you just wouldn't know those, and it sounds silly, but to not know those, those things is a, is a good thing, I suppose. Isn't yeah, it? it's, it's, it's amazing really what you could do, and it, it just shows that you can, you could build a, a, great, like a, a great looking model railway, but with just things to have the hand that otherwise mm. would go to waste. Yeah. Uh, again, the mud is wood filler, sort of thing you just find on your average DIY shelf, and yeah, yeah. just mix with it PVA, spread it down, and yeah. you get lovely mud effect. And talking of DIY, you've got next to you the uh, model railway in a box just there. Ah, is yes. a kind of DIY one, so for me then. This is you did this last year? Yes, right? I did this for, uh, for you guys, yeah. for the, uh, your Christmas video. And basically what it depicts is um, a little um, sort of uh, Christmassy sort of scene, um, featuring a little pecket and a little brake fan doing shuttle rides uh, in between uh, the station and the siding. And uh, basically I wanted to see what could be done in a small space and this mm. fits inside this wrapping paper box so it's easy to store and easy to hide away. So if you don't have a space for a big layout, something like this is perfect. You just simply just put it back in the box, slide it under a bed or put mm. it on a shelf and uh, yeah, it's, it's good to go. So it was, it was a lot easier to tra uh, travel with this than I, than I oh, think. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, literally everything goes in one box. Yeah. And it also has an automatic shuttle system, so the engine automatically goes back and forth and yeah. stops itself. And that's what's great, because you know people come to these events and they see these large layouts, and maybe they think, oh, I couldn't get to that. But to be able to see something like this, oh, yeah, means yeah. it's really attainable. It's, it's really, really obtainable. I mean, there's, you know, this, this layout it, it itself, you know, without the locomotives, probably costs less than £100 to build. Mm. You know, that's all with all the scenery and buildings. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a really great way of getting started. Also, it's a great way of practicing techniques and learning new skills. Mm. I mean, this is the first day I've actually used snow on. So, oh, really? Yeah, this was an actual experiment, and I'm really pleased with how yeah, it's turned out, and I'll be certainly use it again at some yeah, point. The tracks there, they're really oh yeah, but, yeah that, was, that was simply achieved with a bit of masking tape, um, masked off the width of some tyres of some uh, little die cast vehicles and then just peeled it off once I put the snow on there and it, you get a lovely effect. Oh well, well thank you so much Callum for joining us here and for showing us your layouts, it's, uh, it's been a pleasure, pleasure. and uh, it's back to you in the studio. Welcome back everyone. Oh, hold on. We can actually hear you this time. I know, I know. Simon turned the mic off, so everyone at home, sorry, but blame Simon. Well, it's live, so what can we do? <laughs> so, what a day it's been. Yeah, it's been pretty, um, um, yeah, we've still got... Still got 40 minutes left. I was going to say, yeah, we've still got quite a while to go. <laughs> so what's been your favourite part of the day? Um, do you know what, I think... Going into to the locomotive storage and, and seeing the one-to-one -one collection and actually seeing people walking around and experiencing them, having seen them go in and, and then that time between then and now, it's obviously you work every day and you know they're there next door to you. But when you actually see kids coming in, looking at them, enjoying it, that's quite special. I think any event that you go to when you have that, yeah. I mean, you've been to plenty, plenty of events yourself, but... Yeah, it's just nice. It feels like you're, you're really doing something and giving something to people. So, yeah, that's about that. And obviously Bob yeah. taking me around. I love Bob. Love Bob. I think everyone wants 
<laughs> it, it's quite magical, isn't it? You know, seeing it all come to life and hmm. families here, like you say, kids really engaging with not only the life size, lo life size locomotives, yeah. but also the models as well. Yeah, yeah, and I think there may still be on the door tickets for tomorrow. Yes. Don't hold us to it, but but yeah, check on hornwood.com, I suppose, yeah. And, and yeah, find out more information there. I think it's just about gone to plan. Sort of, yeah, a couple of technical hitch, hitches there, but I think yeah, we've we've done pretty well for our first live broadcast. Mm, we hope you guys at home have, have enjoyed it so far. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this is our, our first event of the the sort of season. We've got various events coming up over the next few months. So we are going to be at Dorset Steam Fair next week for anyone in the area. We are then going to go to the Great Electric Train Show, right. um, which is in Milton Keynes, and that's in October. Mm. Um, we're then going to the Great British Water Railway Show, okay. which is new for 2019. Yep. Um, and we have something quite special happening there. So we've got a club exclusive members lounge. All right. So we're selling reduced price tickets on the website, on our website, um, for club members only. Um, so if you want to get involved in that, um, then yeah. Order your tickets now. Whose um, palms do I have to grease to get a, a VIP seat? Mm, I'll speak to you later. Okay, brilliant. <laughs> so you might see me there. You know, um, we'll have a bit Wally as well. In the oh, wow. Class, brilliant. So get Wally. Yeah, yeah. The guys are here out, out in, the, um, yeah. in the event. Yeah, so. I saw them earlier. Yeah. Um, and then next year, as I said to Simon earlier, is the Hornby 100. Oh, God. He said you've got some things in, in motion. Uh, can you tell anything? Absolutely no. not. It's set to be an amazing year, though. Yeah. Very, very exciting. It's not long now, a few months. No, it's, it's not, you know, not often that businesses get to 100 years. So mm. I think it's going to be extremely special. Yeah, special for you, I suppose, being in the position you're in to be able to, to be a part of that. Yeah, and, and, and everyone, really. And, yeah. and these guys at home, you know, we, we hope that you look forward to, to see what we've got in store. Mm. Um, and we've uh, obviously got to thank a few people, don't we? Yeah, we have. So thank you to Adam in the Bird's Nest. Thanks, Adam. For doing all the production for us today. Thank you to Lyndon, CEO of Hornby Hobbies, for, for coming on earlier. And of course, can't forget for Simon. Obviously. Even though he did turn the mic on. <laughs> Um, we also want to thank Callum and, and Laurie for showing me around earlier and of course Bob for his amazing tour and we want to thank you at home the people that have joined us because this is our first ever live, uh, live broadcast and it's down to you that, that this is coming about. Signalbox is about you at home um, and for me personally uh, I, yeah, I'm, I'm really humbled that people keep tuning in every month and um, yeah just keep, keep your comments coming um, subscribe obviously so you get to see everything every month and, and yeah, who knows, maybe you'll see me at another event, maybe you'll obviously see Montana will be at many of the events, yeah, and yeah, yeah, please do come hi, it's, 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 say hi, it's been great to talk to a few people at, at this event today, so, um, well, sadly, that, that we've come to the end of, of our live broadcast. It's been a bit sad. I know, hopefully we'll do this again, but um, in the meantime, I'm Mike. I'm Montana. You've been great, and, and we'll, we'll see you at the next stop.